All right, good evening, members of council and uh, administration. I uh, want to welcome everyone to, uh, to our meeting, roll call. Um, we have one absent uh, counselor who's uh, recovering from surgery, and uh, so he's off on, uh, on personal uh, time. And uh, so with that, uh, um, I'd like to acknowledge that uh, the land that uh, on the land and surrounded by water originally inhabited by our indigenous peoples who have traveled this area since time immemorial. Uh, this territory is within the lands honored by the wampum treaties agreements between the Asnashnabi um, and Hadi Nasadni uh, and Shawnee, Alani and uh, Lenape uh, and allied nations to peacefully share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes. Specifically, we'd like to acknowledge the presence of the Three Fires Confederacy, the Ojibwe, the Ottawa, and the Potawatomi, and Huron, Wendat, uh, the Wendat peoples. We are dedicated to honoring the indigenous history and culture while remaining committed to moving forward respectfully uh, with all our First Nations, the Inuit and Métis. So with that, members of uh, council, do we have any disclosure or opinion interest on the agenda as presented to you this evening? None declared, so we'll have that reflected uh, in, in the minutes. The minutes uh, of the regular council meeting, December 14, 2021, if I could have a motion uh, to approve those minutes as presented, Deputy Mayor Bichetti and uh, Council Jobin. Any errors or omission on those uh, minutes as presented? Hearing none, all in favor? Oppose if any, uh, that is uh, carried. There's no supplementary items to, uh, to deal with this evening, members of council. And uh, we also do not have any delegations presented in, uh, to council. So we'll move into communications and we do have uh, 10 um, pieces of, of communications. And if I could have a motion to receive uh, said communication. Councillor Houston move, supported by Councillor Outenhoff. All in favor? Opposed if any, that's carried. Members of council, is there any uh, communication piece they would like to, uh, for us to draw our attention to? Hearing none, then we have no action required on any communication. So we'll move on to committee minutes. We have the Town of Tecumseh Business Improvement Area, uh, December 15, 2021. And if I could have a motion to uh, receive uh, those minutes. Councillor Houston, Councillor uh, Dowie. On the motion, any uh, comments or hearing none out in favor? Well, if any of that's carried. Uh, next uh, is the Police Services Board, our December 17th meeting. And if I could have a motion uh, to accept the minutes. Deputy Mayor Bichetti and uh, Councilor Jobin, any uh, questions or comments? Go ahead, Councilor Dowie. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. And uh, uh, I, I just would uh, highlight Section G2. Uh, that, uh, Appears as if uh, the uh, there were a couple of items that were brought forward by board members to the OPP management. Uh, number one, the number of traffic stops being down, uh, and uh, the the number of false alarm calls. Uh, and I'm wondering if just it could for the next police services board meeting, uh, is it expected that the OPP management will respond back to? those inquiries that were made by the different board members? Well, that's the, <clears throat> certainly the, uh, the uh, intention and in, in, in particular, um, uh, there was a whole host of other things as well, POAs and, and uh, you know, the amount of those being reduced and, and so forth. So we're, we are expecting, you know, that uh, to be some follow-up and then that can be, be brought back to, uh, um, you know, to the, to the members, but uh, most importantly, uh, also to uh, to council. Okay, thank you. So on the minutes, all in favor? 
Opposed, if any, and that is carried. We move on to reports. So we have a, a, a reports from the development services and that's our zoning bylaw amendment uh, 165 uh, Shane and the results from our public meeting and final recommendations. So I'd like to call upon our manager of uh, planning and services and local economic development to summarize the report. And Mr. Jeffries, uh, I'll pass it on to you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, members of council. Uh, council will recall that uh, on October 26th of 2021, it held a public meeting to consider a zoning bylaw amendment pertaining to 165 Shane and, and the proposed uh, bylaw amendment um, included the facilitation of lot creation on that parcel and to permit uh, commercial uses within a structure on the parcel. Uh, and if you can turn to attachment one, you'll see the, the subject property, um, which is located on the west side of Shane Street, uh, just north of, of Dillon Drive. It's a rather large parcel in the context of this neighborhood at about 22,000 square feet. Uh, and it contains an existing dwelling and a rather large accessory structure uh, from which um, an automobile body repair garage uh, used to operate. And it's important to note that the zoning that currently pertains to this land uh, continues to permit that automobile body garage as a permitted use. Um, in August of 2021, the Committee of Adjustment heard an application for severance, and that's on attachment two, if you go to that. And it, it proposed the creation of, uh, of the new lot to the south of the existing building um, and, and the retention of a 75 foot wide lot that concludes the, the building and the, the attached garage. It was granted provisional consent subject to a number of conditions, including the rezoning of the property to remove that permitted use of an automobile body repair garage. Uh, in addition to that, the owner requested that a small range of um, small scale commercial uses be permitted within 500 square feet of the attached garage structure. Uh, and also asked for 40% lot coverage on the, the smaller of the, the two lots that are proposed to be created. At the public meeting, there was no one in attendance, but we did receive some written correspondence. Um, and there are generally two issues that were summarized in that correspondence. And one was the uh, compatibility of the proposed commercial uses and the need for those uses. And the second was potential soil contamination related to that former use of an automobile body garage. So with respect to the compatibility and need, uh, the, the guiding policy is contained in, in subsection 1012 of the town's official plan. And in that, that policy, it's, it sets out that where there are substantially vacant buildings that have zoning pertaining to them that isn't in conformity with the existing designation, which is residential for this area, council consider a, a rezoning to allow for uses that are as or more compatible than that previous use. And that previous use, of course, is the automobile body repair garage. Uh, subject to meeting a number of criteria, including that the building lawfully existed prior to the adoption of the OP, that um, the uses don't interfere with the desirable enjoyment of the surrounding uses. Um, that they don't constitute a danger to uh, surrounding uses in person because of the haz hazardous nature or traffic generation, and that the, the proposed bylaw limits the, uh, the amount of expansion that's allowed for that use. So again, at the public meeting, the owner had proposed at 500 square feet of that accessory structure be used for um, a list of permitted uses, and he had included in that list uh, general professional offices, a uh, pet groomer, a baker, chef, caterer, and a child, child care provider and a yoga studio. And upon consideration of the comments that were received at the public meeting, um, administration believes that with, with the exception of child care provider, all those uses meet the criteria outlined in section 10.12. And the zoning bylaw that is before council later tonight reflects that. So the, it, it proposes the other uses with the exception of um, the, uh, the child care provider. Um, the, the need with respect to the need for this and it, the potential for undermining other commercial areas, we, we don't believe that it's of a scale or character type that would undermine existing commercial uses. It's, it's rather small. It's like a home occupation. Um, and we don't believe that it will be that any of the, the proposed uses would be disrupt, uh, disrupted to the surrounding uh, residential neighborhood. This atta attachment to shows how parking could be accommodated on the site. Yeah, and, and the bylaw establishes that three parking spaces shall be provided for that uh, accessory uh, commercial use. 
Um, and, and that was something that was also raised at, at the public meeting. With respect to soil contamination, we consulted with the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing uh, and the Ministry of um, Environment, Conservation and Parks. And there, there was no concern with respect to uh, soil contamination with respect to going through the zoning bylaw amendment process. Uh, it was concluded though that a, a record of site condition and a phase one environmental site assessment would likely be necessary through the um, building permit process. So it, just to conclude, Administration believes that uh, the, the zoning is supportable, subject to removing the child care provider from the list of permitted uses that the proponent proposed, uh, and that the zoning bylaw amendment is consistent with the provincial policy statement, conforms to the county official plan and to the Tecumseh official plan, uh, and results in a, an appropriate development and result in elimination of a, a currently permitted use is not, not desirable for the surrounding residential neighborhood. Um, those are my comments, Mr. Mayor, and I make myself available for any questions that council may have. All right, thank you, Mr. Jeffries. Any questions or comments on uh, Mr. Jeffries' report? Go ahead, Councilor uh, Dowd. Thank you, Worship, and uh, thank you to all the members of the administration for uh, working on this file. I know it's been going on for quite some time, and uh, I, I feel... Uh, Relative to the status quo, uh, this is a pretty uh, good reuse of the property as a whole, uh, both the severance and the, uh, <clears throat> the, elim the elimination of the auto body shop uh, uh, in favor of uh, something that's less, uh, just leaves less of a footprint uh, in, in the area. So uh, I'm happy to see uh, that this evolution has happened certainly better than the status quo and uh, and looking forward to the redevelopment uh so i look forward to supporting this when it uh, when we vote and thank you council dowie any further questions and comments yes uh, council Houston. Uh, thank you worship and uh to chad um just a question regarding the proposed parking on the diagram um how is that parking proposed to be uh accessed just with the redevelopment of that southerly portion, um, is that coming in between the two buildings to access that? Because it, it just looks like down the road, uh, when that would be developed, it wouldn't be um, accessible from the south end of that property. Yeah. Through you, Mr. Mayor, um, th there are a couple of options to access that. It's a concept, it's intended just to illustrate how parking can be accommodated on site. Um, so it can be accommodated through the existing access to the north, but um, another access could be constructed on the southern portion of the property leading directly to, to the parking spaces. Thank you. Okay. Any further questions or comments? Councilor Jobin. I just would like to, I agree with Councillor Dowie. This has been an ongoing um, application and I just wanna say the applicant was uh, good to work with. He was quite patient. Um, and dealing with all the different um, obstacles. Um, so um, I'm just grateful as well to see this come to fruition for that resident as well. Okay, for the questions or comments, hearing none, then a motion to adopt the report is presented. Councillor Houston and uh, Councillor Dowie. All in favor? Opposed if any, that's carried unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Jeffrey. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to uh, the second report, uh, Public Works Engineering Services, uh, uh, PWES 2022-01, the appointment of an engineer, new drain. So I'll call upon our Director of Public Works Engineering, Mr. Bartnick, to summarize the report and recommendation. Thank you, Your Worship, uh, and through you. <clears throat> uh, the report before you today is uh, an appointment of an engineer for a new drain. Uh, so the property owner at uh, 3425 County Road 43 uh, has an open severance application with a condition to provide storm connections uh, to an existing drainage system. Uh, these conditions must be fulfilled by March of 2022. Uh, there is an existing roadside drainage uh, enclosure located along the west side of County Road 43 that is owned by the County of Essex, uh, which drains northerly to County Road 42 and into the St. Louis drain. Uh, and if Sean can pull up uh, attachment two, uh, kind of gives you a uh, little sense of the, uh, the location that we're speaking of. 
Uh, through this discussions with the County of Essex, uh, it was their position that the stormwater connections from the adjacent properties into their enclosure would not be permitted. Uh, however, the county did indicate their preference for the roadside enclosure to be petitioned to become a municipal drain, uh, which would then provide the adjacent owners the opportunity to make uh, a legal connection into the drain. Uh, it is recommended that uh, Mark Hernandez of Dillon Consulting uh, be appointed as he is currently working on the St. Louis drainage area under uh, Section 78 report. Uh, and he can utilize uh, the examination completed thus far and facilitate this petition in a timely and efficient manner. Uh, and I'm available for any questions, uh, if there are any. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Bartnick. Any questions or comments on, uh, on the uh, report? <clears throat> Tulsa Dowie? Uh, thank you, Worship, and uh, through you to, uh, to to Phil. Thank you. I know this. What we're considering is the appointment of the drainage engineer, so this might be pre premature of a question. Uh, but uh, would we expect this drain to remain as an open drain, or would it be piped, uh, given the the pending urbanization of the area? Or is that I'm I'm expecting that that'll be resolved in the process, and just hoping for confirmation uh, uh, as to whether we we have an idea at this point in time. Uh, through you, uh, your worship, Councillor Dowie, it's my understanding that the uh, the new drain uh, would 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 be the drainage enclosure that is located on on the west side of County Road 43. Uh, so it's it. I don't think a new drain would be established. It's more of a redesignation of the infrastructure that's there. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Councillor Jobin. So typically when there is um, an assessment done, this is under for one single property to acquire a connection to the drainage system, but this will be an assessment to all properties as well. Are they gonna be associated to any of the costs or is, will this strictly be just to that individual landowner because it's their connection? We're not doing like a maintenance or a cleaning. Uh, through you, Your Worship, uh, it's my understanding that the cost uh, of the engineer's report uh, would be borne by the uh, property owner requesting it. Uh, so when the engineer is appointed by council, uh, the first step would be to hold an on-site meeting uh, and, the, and the drainage engineer would review the petition uh, for the drain uh, and uh, either validate it uh, or not validate it based on uh, his recommendations. Uh, we have had some pre-consultation uh, uh, with Mr. Hernandez on this, uh, and he feels that the petition would be fulfilled. Uh, so it's our understanding that um, as the drainage engineer uh, moves forward with his report, uh, that those costs for the report would be uh, for that property owner who had requested the works. Okay, thank you. Right, for the questions or comments, Hearing none, then I need a motion to appoint the drainage engineer as uh, proposed by Mr. Bartonick. Uh, Councilor Alton, not moved. Councilor Jobin, support. All in favor? Opposed? That is carried. Thank you. All right, Madam Clerk, um, read the, uh, the bylaws. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Worship. We just have the one bylaw on the agenda this evening, and this is the bylaw to amend the town's uh, zoning bylaw 1746, as reported on earlier this evening for 165 Shane Street. We're respectfully asking for first and second readings to this bylaw, and if appropriate, third and final. All right. Thank you. Move uh, uh, to readings, uh, uh, Deputy Mayor Bichetti, Council Use and Support. Uh, any questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Opposed, if any, that is carried. And then third reading is in order. Move with Councillor Houston, Councillor Ottenhoff, support. All in favor? Opposed, if any, that is carried. Uh, thank you. Unfinished business? None. Any new business? Councillor Ottenhoff. Uh, thank you, Worship. And through you to uh, administration, um, I guess most specifically, perhaps Mr. Anthony, um, it's recently come to my, uh, my attention that there's a, a significant tree limb uh, hanging or dangling off of, I think it's a municipal tree, uh, right in front of, I think it's 107 Rutland. 
uh, right at the intersection of Rutland and Essex Road. Um, I apologize, although it's recently come to my attention, I, I did want to get to you more immediately, but I'm sorry. So um, anyways, I bring it to your attention now. Uh, th there's one tree, I mean, from street level, one limb, you can, you can pretty well grab it. And my fears are kids will come and play, loosen it off, and it is a significant size. So it's fallen off the tree and is basically caught in between the main trunk and a significant limb. Uh, looking up, it seems that there's a few other limbs as well that maybe need attention. So if we could just look at that tree, give it a good go over for safety reasons, it would be good. Much appreciated. Thank you. We will look into that. Thank you. Okay, anything, uh, anything uh, else, any further new business? Okay, then uh, if I could have a motion, we need uh, uh, to move uh, in, um, in camera uh, in a meeting. Will, uh, we're gonna recess this meeting. So I could have a motion uh, in accordance with section 239.2D of the Municipal Act 2001, which permits a meeting, part of a meeting to be closed to the public when the subject matter being considered is labor relations and uh, employee negotiations. So if I could have a motion to move in camera, Councillor Altenhoff move, Councillor Houston support. All in favor? Opposed if any, uh, that is carried. And once the, our in-camera session concludes, we'll go back uh, under uh, open session. So we'll sign off and uh, you have your link.
Okay, we all back, uh, Sean? Yes. It appears so, Your Worship. <clears throat> all right, uh, well, welcome back and, and uh, into our open, uh, open session. I want to report out a, a, clo a closed meeting. We had an electronic in-camera personnel uh, committee meeting and it was held in closed session in accordance to section 239-2D of the Municipal Act considered a labor relations and employee negotiations. At the meeting, direction was given to administration on contract negotiations. So with that, uh, and we did um, ask for any new business, so we'll move right into uh, confirmatory, uh, confirmatory bylaw. I think confirm the proceedings of our uh, Tuesday, January 11th, 2022, regular meeting of council of the Corporation of Town Tecumseh. Be given first, second, third, and final reading. Moved by uh, Councillor Altenhoff and supported by Councillor Jobin. All in favor? Opposed if any of that is carried. Uh, is there any notices of motion? None call for. So our next meeting, uh, members of council, will be Tuesday, uh, January 25th, 2022, uh, beginning at 6 p.m., an in-camera council meeting, uh, followed by our regular council meeting at 7, and a uh, special meeting council on Wednesday, January 26th, uh, 6 p.m. special council meeting for municipal modernization program, and that's our intake two uh, projects. So with no further business, then uh, certainly uh, our meeting is concluded and adjournment is certainly in order. Moved by Councillor Ottenhoff, Council use and support. All in favor? Oppose if any, uh, that is carried. And I believe um, 